Welcome to the College Football Bros. I'm Michael Newman. I'm Ryan Newman. And I'm Trey Newman. Today we are ranking all 14 Big Ten teams. Uh, Be sure to leave your comments below with your thoughts on our rankings. Let's get right into it, Trey, who fell 14th on our list. That's the Northwestern Wildcats. And, you know, if I'm a Northwestern fan, I'm kind of hanging my hat on the the even-year Cats. You know, they won the West in 2018 and in 2020, and they sandwiched, you know, 19 and 21, some 3 and 9 duds. So they're going to have to turn it around. You know, Fitzgerald is an outstanding coach, but he, I personally think he's going to need an extra year to get them back competitive this time around. Uh, the offense was just so dreadful last year. They averaged only 13 a game in conference. Skaronski on the O-line is a gem, but Ryan Holinsky really needs to improve the the passing game and, and be able to open up the offense a little bit more. And the other thing about last year that was surprising was the defense is usually the calling card for, uh, in Evanston, but they they lost longtime defensive coordinator Mike Hankowitz last year, and, and it really hurt them. They they regressed mightily. Now they lost Brandon Joseph to, to, to Notre Dame, one of their best defensive players. And, you know, this year Fitzgerald, he brought in a lot of transfers, particularly on the D-line, so I'd expect the defense to to look a little improved over last year, but uh, especially in year two of the system. But I'm not expecting a whole lot. No, I'm not either, unfortunately. Uh, but never you can never count Northwestern out. But it is surprising to see them 14th. Um, all right, anyways, let's move on to number 13. Uh, we have Rutgers. Uh, Chiano, he's been able to get Rutgers to show some signs of life, which is which is nice. Um, you know, they won five games last year, definitely a step in the right direction. Unfortunately, they, they lose quite a bit off that team, um, and I think their schedule is a bit harder than it was last year, so they might not be able to get to five again this this year, but, you know, if Chiano's able to put together another solid recruiting class like he's been able to do coming up here for 2023, I think the dividends will start to maybe show more in the field and in that year, 2023. Um, but, you know, a lot does fall on the shoulders of potentially the new quarterback, Gavin Wimsat, uh, the four-star quarterback. He's kind of looked at as almost like the savior when they got him, helped kind of turn that program around. If he's good and pans out, then, you know, that's going to be huge for, for Rutgers to be able to make them competitive. If he kind of turns out to be not that great, it's really going to make it hard for Shiano to, I don't know, maybe just make it there long-term again. All right, number 12 on the list, we have Indiana. They uh, had a huge drop-off last year, 2-10, and 0-9 oh in conference play. They've made a ton of changes, new offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. I don't think the defense uh, will be terrible this year. They've got a good secondary returning. They added a lot of uh, players f- via the transfer portal to the front seven. So defense, not going to be good, but but I don't think it's it's going to be awful. The offense, we'll see. I don't think there's any position group on that side of the ball where you're feeling good entering 2022. They brought in uh, Connor Bazelak, the transfer quarterback from Missouri, so maybe that could help things. Uh, He's the favorite to start. Adding Sean Shivers from Auburn at running back, he's got some potential, but we'll see. The betting market has them as winning four or five games, and it's kind of hard to disagree with that. Yep. Number 11, Illinois, uh, you know, they made some good progress last year in Brett Bielema's first season, went five and seven, and they lost four of those games by less than one score. So they were they were kind of right there. The challenge, though, is that they're they're last in the conference in returning production. Uh, But with that said, I really like Chase Brown at running back coming back. He ran for over a thousand yards and it looks like the, the quarterback job might go to Syracuse transfer Tommy DeVito. Art Sitkowski's right there, too. Uh, and and Bielema brought in a new offensive coordinator because they need to kickstart that offense because they ranked last in passing last year and only mustered about 20 points per game. On the defensive side, though, more optimistic. Ryan Walters is a, is a young, bright uh, coach, probably get some head coaching looks soon. Uh, they were really strong. Uh, the challenge, uh, I guess, for the defense this year is the linebacker. They're replacing a lot of uh, production there. Devin Witherspoon, though, is a standout uh, in the Big Ten in the secondary. I like them. Uh, I like that unit. The The real key overall, though, is just that offense. They need it to to be a little bit more potent. If it is, they could climb the ranks here in the Big Ten and maybe get bowl eligible. Yeah, I think Illinois 
they could they could surprise some folks this year. Um, all right, we got at number ten we have Maryland. Um, step or, step in the right direction for them last year. They went seven and six. Uh, they didn't beat anybody worth you know noteworthy, but hey, seven wins is seven wins. Um, the offense, like last year, it should be I think pretty darn good um, with Tiger Valoa coming back. Um, and then they got four stars coming back on the offensive line. Skill positions are pretty good. So, you know, I, I'm I'm really not worried about that side of the ball. If you're Maryland, what you worry about is the other side. You worry about the defense. Um, they struggled, no doubt about it. And I think it'll be slightly improved. They got seven starters back. So, you know, as long as they stay healthy, I think that group should actually be a little bit better. Um, the problem will go if for, on top of that is just, their schedule. I mean, they play in the East. It's just always so hard for them. So you always have Penn State, Michigan, Ohio State. I mean, that's just three games that they're going to be massive underdogs in. Then they play at Wisconsin from the West. So throw in four, that's makes your ceiling like eight wins pretty much already if you're Maryland. And then there's obviously other competitive teams that they got to play as well. So, you know, if you're Maryland, I think you're looking at, hey, if I make a, if we make a bowl game, I think you got to consider that a success. I think their season win total set at right at that. I think it's set at six. So, anything more than that, if they win seven again, I think you got to consider that gravy. If they were in the the West Division, then I'm sure you could yeah. talk yourselves into Maryland as a dark horse just with that passing game. I'm, but like you yeah. say, tough life in the Big Ten East. But getting to number nine, we have uh, a team in the Big Ten West, Nebraska who Ryan's ranking dragged them down a bit here. Ryan, of course, the, the pessimist, the pessimist has <laughs> man. Um, I, but I think it's, this is a fair spot there. Probably on the same tier, though, as the kind of three or four teams ahead of them. Yeah. The defense will probably take a step back, losing some of their best players, especially in the secondary. Uh, but it should still be pretty good, adding O'Shawn Mathis at defensive end, coming in from T- TCU. They got him over Texas, so that was a pretty good... A pretty good get and then four of their top five tacklers are back so defense will still be pretty good offense just kind of depends on how mark whipple can implement his system in year one and how you know casey thompson the transfer from texas can acclimate to it we'll see it's obviously going to be more pass heavy and the receiving core feels like we said this last year there's a lot of talent there but yeah. it, in many cases it's unproven so We'll see. Uh, long story short, though, I kind of think, you know, defense will get a little bit worse. Offense about the same. Special teams, though, I would assume gets a lot better. There's almost no way that it can't get better. <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed. Um, and then I think the bad luck in close games, it's just almost impossible to have that repeat. So with those things put together, it goes from three and nine to maybe seven and five. I'm sure Husker fans are open eight and four. Because the schedule sets up pretty well. It's a, it's a pretty easy schedule. It is. It's as good as you could ask for. All right. Number eight is Minnesota. Uh, the Gophers are a, a, a tough one to gauge. Uh, it really is going to come down to the, the offense this year and if Tanner Morgan can regain some of his old form. Fleck brought back Kirk Soraka uh, as the offensive coordinator again, which in 2019 he was paired with Tanner Morgan, and they, they put up some gaudy numbers. Uh Morgan's not going to have many excuses, at least in the um, kind of the players he's got around them. He's got Chris Ottman Bell back at receiver, Dylan Wright, uh, Muhammad Ibrahim is back at running back after missing most of last year due to injury. I guess the biggest worry is the offensive line. They have to replace everyone, but they still have the potential All American center, John Michael Schmitz, back. So that's a nice, nice piece. The defense might not be as good as last year. As they lose, they lose most of the, the kind of the D line, some of the edge rushers. But the overall, I think the unit should be pretty, pretty good. The linebackers and secondary are mostly intact. They got, got a lot of good pieces coming back. They were second in the conference in in scoring defense last year. So if that D line can generate some pressure, not really worried about the defense. It's just I think the season is going to come down to that offense again, and and if Morgan and Soraka can can work their magic again. Yep, I agree with that. All right, let's move on to number seven. We have Purdue. Um, Purdue is one of the fortunate teams. They avoid Michigan and Ohio State uh, from the East, so that already just off the bat gives them an advantage. Um, but unfortunately, I just I couldn't get myself to kind of pick them to to win the West. I wanted to. I was hoping to kind of before the season, or at least in the uh, kind of more in the off season here. Like, God, I want to be able to pick Purdue, but. Um, I, when you look at their what 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 they lose, um, particularly 
on offense to me with their their wide receivers. They lose the three their top three pass catchers, and Milton Wright was that just happened recently because of academic problems. So he's no longer with the program. He was expected to be back. That's a huge loss, of course. David Bell is gone. Jackson Anthrop. Those are three key playmakers that they had last year for a team that in Brian Brom's offense, very Jeff much Brom. so. Jeff Brom's. What I say? He said Brian. Brian. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. It's bros. They're bros. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, in Jeff Brom's offense, that is just vital to have you know those key key pass catchers. So I think that's just going to really hurt them. And George Karlaf, this is a little big loss on defense. On the defensive line, he's was sturdy for them. So I, I just couldn't get myself to bring them. I think they'll be solid. And O'Connell's good, but you know I just I think there's kind of a limit as to how good they're able to be. I just don't see them being able to truly win the West. You know what, Ryan? Don't worry about that uh, Brian Jeff comment because you, you you accidentally called Caleb Williams Cal- Caleb Daniels in uh, Caleb Daniels. In the, uh, the U.S. Oklahoma or no, episode. It Oh, it was the Oklahoma episode. Yeah, and man, you got Ouch. you got roasted in the you got, comments. You did. <laughs> so, oh, man. <laughs> I'm surprised so. you guys didn't catch that, man. I, I saw it in editing, and I was like, whatever. People are going to understand. It was just a you know slip of the hey, tongue. He, but no, they hey, didn't. I'm a basketball <laughs> fan. I'm a basketball fan. He was he was a Villanova, Villanova guard, man. Yeah. I thought maybe it was – you were talking about the Kansas game. I thought you were mixing the Kansas yeah. quarterback. Oh, yeah. And, you know. Yeah, true. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, it probably was. Yeah, sure. Uh, moving on to number six on our list, it's Iowa. So we've got the fourth uh, Big Ten West team in a row here. This looks to be your typical Iowa team again. The defense should be great. They were great last year and, you know, lose some good players, but they bring back eight starters, including Riley Moss at corner and Jack Campbell at linebacker, two potential All-Americans this year. The offense, we're going to assume, is bad until proven otherwise it's it'll be better because it's 16th in the nation in returning production all of their top receivers are back including a couple freshmen that are well now sophomores but they yeah. played as freshmen last year so there's nowhere to go but up for spencer petrus at quarterback um but again i'm just gonna still assume it's bad the biggest obstacle i think to winning the division though is that they play both ohio state and michigan from the east so kind of a rough schedule draw there yeah it is Number five, Michigan State. Mel Tucker, Sparty, they had about as good of a season as as they could have last year. It, it just kind of seemed like everything was went their way. Kenneth Walker was incredible. That really helped Peyton Thorne kind of blossom as a quarterback. This year it's going to be interesting to see Thorne without that Heisman-level running back. I, I think he did gain some confidence last year, though, so I'm not terribly concerned, especially especially since he has that home home run threat, Jaden Reed, to, to, to throw to still. The weakness last year was the defensive side, especially the secondary. But they return a lot of production there that hopefully developed more. And they added some transfers, including two, uh, I guess, at linebacker, Winman from UNLV and Brule from Mississippi State. They're expected to to be contributors. So if Tucker can get another haul of, of transfers to kind of blend like last year, they have a shot to exceed expectations once again. But it just seems like a, a tall order given some of the fortune they had last year. And also given their schedule, because I think they could be a good team by the metrics, but a tough schedule with games at Michigan, at Penn State, Ohio State, and then they drew Wisconsin and Minnesota from the West. Yeah, it definitely seems like a team that even though even if they're as good as they were, they're, they just ain't going to match that win total. So anyways, moving on, we got at number four, uh, we have Wisconsin. Uh, they This is the, the favorite here uh, by us, I guess, in the West although not by much, um, they have a lot to replace on defense. Um, essentially the entire back eight of that 3-4-D. Three, three, so they won't be the number one defense in the nation as far as total yards per game like they, they were last year. Um, but they'll, they'll still be really good because when haven't they been? Um, they just might take a little while to gel. Offense is obviously what needs, uh, th- needs some work here, and I'm not really sure they did anything to solve that problem um they struck out uh, in the offseason trying to land a transfer quarterback seems like they were in the mix for Jaden daniels make sure i get that right and say that wrong yeah. <laughs> Jaden no daniels, no yeah. caleb williams caleb <laughs> <laughs> well him too but i feel like they even tried to get Jaden daniels and they struck yeah out okay i thought you were trying to say caleb williams again but you just <laughs> yeah. messed up both the first oh, okay. and last name <laughs> yeah because they got ingram the offensive coordinator no. so true okay well 
double bad on my part, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, they struck out is what I'm trying to say for yeah. sure. So they're going to have to rely on Graham Mertz again. Um, he's, I don't see why he wouldn't be the guy at this point. And I mean, he was terrible last year, 11 picks to just 10 touchdowns. I mean, in that today's game, that's, that's about as bad as it gets. Um, they'll be able to run the ball. They have Braylon Allen, who's just fantastic at running back. Um, but they lose their top three pass catchers off an already horrible passing game. So there's definitely some concerns. They'll still have a really good D. It won't be as good. So I don't know. I'm just, I, I, they're not clear favorites in the West. They are the favorite, but boy, I, I actually yeah. might not favor them. Yeah. It's not like an odds on favorite. That's for sure. The no. West is, is yeah. wide open. Um, but uh, yeah, I wor- that receiving core is definitely worrisome. I will say Mertz was better towards the end of last year. Yeah. Maybe that's a sign of things to come, but he does not. I mean, we'll see. There's just yeah. it's uh, question marks in the receiving core. I'll say so. We'll Very. See what happens. Okay, number three, we have Penn State, and we like them as a bounce back team. We're all fairly high on them. They were a better team than their record indicated last year. If you look at the metrics, I think the offense will improve in year two under Mike Yursich, the offensive coordinator. O line is still a major question, but that's been the case for years. It seems like so. No difference there. Hopefully it can improve this year. But I think Sean Clifford could be better this season. He was, you know, worse after the injury last year, but had a pretty good start to the season. So maybe that played a factor in his play. Um, You've got the five-star running back, Nicholas Singleton, hopefully to help the running game. You've got a really good receiving core. I think it could be potentially even better than last year, which is saying a lot because Jahan Dotson is gone. But you've got Parker Washington. You've got the transfer from Western Kentucky, Mitchell Tinsley. So, you're set in the receiving core. And even though the defense loses some pretty good pieces, Jaquan Brisker at safety, Arnold Ebicady on the D-line, they return a lot of talent. There's a lot of uh, potential breakout candidates that I think Manny Diaz will still have a, you know, a solid defense. And they had some major injuries last year that on that yeah. D-line that really hurt them, really PJ, hurt them. P.J. Mustafer missed much of last season. He'll be back. Um Another Adisa defensive Isaac end. missed the entire year. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Indeed. All right, number two, Michigan. Now, it's going to be awfully difficult to to match last year, You know, winning the Big Ten, dominating Ohio State, and, and getting to the playoff. But I think a lot of people are are assuming they're going to have a, this major drop-off. You know, They lose three first-round picks, both their coordinators, Hassan Haskins, but they have a lot of good pieces coming back on top of the of you know some pretty good talent that they've accumulated over the years. McNamara is back at quarterback, but I would expect to see a lot more JJ McCarthy this year. It seems he provides you know more some more upside to that offense. Either way, though, they're going to have last year's top targets back, including Cornelius Johnson, tight end Eric All, the 2020 leading receiver Ronnie Bell is back, uh, Blake Corum back at running back he put up some big numbers behind Haskins so not concerned about running back they've also got blue chip Donovan Edwards he could break out and the line really should be a strength especially adding Oluwatimi from Virginia he was a Remington finalist last year I guess the biggest concern is the defensive side they lose Hutchinson and Ajabo of course so it's going to be up to guys like Taylor Upshaw Braden McGregor to help fill that void that's really the spot on the on the, the at the end positions to watch early in the season, but on the back end, guys like sophomore DJ Turner at corner, he's a stud, could be one of the best in the Big Ten this year. So I think overall they're going to be a lot better than what the average fan thinks, but uh, it, it's going to be more on the offense's shoulders, I think, to this this season and carry more of the load. As and the defense can't regress too much if they want to contend to, to win the title again. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, all right, let's move on to number one, per the per the norm in the Big Ten, we have the Ohio State Buckeyes. And for Ohio State, this is a rarity, but they're number one in, in, in the Big Ten in returning production. Uh, that's a little bit scary to think about considering how good they usually are and how good their offense was last year. C.J. Stroud, of course, is back. Trevion Henderson, a great backfield there, no doubt about it. Jackson Smith and Jigba, uh, a receiver, one of the best seasons we've seen in a while. Uh, those that QB running back wide receiver trio is the best in the nation, at least on paper right now. I don't think you could say anything's better. Maybe you might say something maybe match it, but if you're saying they're better, I think you're crazy. Uh, can't beat that. And then there's some with the, all the returning production. There's also a lot of likely breakout kind of candidates that they have waiting in the wings. 
uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., a receiver, some guys on the defense, especially on the defensive line, could potentially break out. So I, I think they're really setting themselves up pretty well for a pretty pretty darn good year. And they also added a really key piece on defense as far as defensive coordinator, Jim Knowles, bringing him in from Oklahoma State. I think that's a big uh, a big get for them. I think he's going to help kind of get that defense back. We've seen Ohio State's defense take a jump in the past where they had a couple of maybe lean down years and then all of a sudden they jump up and have an elite defense. I think they they have the potential to have that kind of jump this year. So uh, it's just there's really not a whole lot of holes that you could poke uh, on this team right now. Yeah, yeah, we'll see if some of that young five-star talent on the defensive line breaks out this year. Yeah. If so, they're scary. Well, they're scary anyway because that offense yes. is insane. Yeah. But, yeah. All right, let's uh, take a look at the overall list here and just give some general thoughts. One thing I see is I feel like there's a – to me, a clear top 10. I think there's, I know, Ryan, you're a bit higher on Illinois maybe than Trey and I, but yeah. I, I think the top 10 is very good, and then the last four is, is yeah. kind of a drop-off. Maybe three in your, if, if I'm I see the last three as a clear drop-off, yeah. I, I, you know, Illinois, I know they don't maybe don't necessarily return a lot in, as far as returning production, but they did have their arguably their best linebacker, I think, that will be coming into this year. He got hurt the very first game of the year against nebraska last year he's coming back so he should be really really good tommy devito yeah he's a new quarterback for for illinois but he is experienced and it's not like brandon peters was elite for them chase brown's back running back i think brett bielema always sports a strong running game um they're gonna i like to you know trade mentioned ryan walters a good defensive coordinator so you know good running game solid defense i don't know i i just see i don't see them being that bad like those three other teams like northwestern Rutgers and um, Indiana. I see them being a clear step ahead. No, that's a good point. You do have to look beyond the returning production number sometimes yes. because that returning production number includes, yeah, losing all of Brandon Peters. That's a big part of it. But if you think Tommy, Tommy DeVito is just as good, then it's not really a exactly. big loss at all. Um, okay, well, I, the other thing I see is that we talked about the Big Ten West and how wide open it is, but you can just see it here with they're all kind of bunched together. And from four... Uh, Wisconsin at four to Nebraska at nine. I just don't think there's that big of a gap. So that that division could could go, I think, five different ways. Or who knows? Maybe Northwestern has a crazy Northwestern year, but I would be shocked. Yeah, and yes, the for sure. and you, you brought it up. The the middle part of that the list I think was impossible mainly because of the Big Ten West. Uh, we have four of those schools right in a row. Um, you, I mean, Iowa, Minnesota, Nebraska, Purdue. If you look at across like most of these preview magazines and and previews out there on the internet, you'll see that they have those guys in almost any possible order. It, it's it's crazy. So you would not be crazy to have Nebraska be the second best Big Ten West team and and you know Purdue as the worst or whatever it is. But I also think like a team like Maryland at number ten, kind of to your point, Michael, I think they're pretty good this year and they're capable of knocking off a couple that are you know much higher on this list. Yeah, that receiving core, well, first of all, Talia is, is awesome. And then the receiving core, yeah. Keem Jarrett, um, Dante, Dante Demas, Demas. was injured for must of last year. Like, that's they're loaded on, on as far as the, the passing game. Yeah, it's just unfortunate they have <laughs> they play in the East, like you said, Mike. If they were in the West, they'd be right there with all those teams trying to vie for the, for the division crown. All right, well, that'll do it for this episode of the College Football Bros. Be sure to check out the other videos on our channel. We already have an in-depth Nebraska preview from our, our Nebraska pessimist, Ryan, so be sure to check that out. Don't don't have too high of expectations. Hey, the, the commenters have not been hating on me. They've been like I'm surprised. understanding. I know. I'm shocked. I thought you were going to get roasted, but not. I, mean, I <laughs> kind of prefaced it at the very beginning of like, you know, I'm a Nebraska fan too. Please don't hate me. I'm just trying to like, you know, not disappoint myself in, in a few months, you know, <laughs> like letting myself down yeah. easy, so to say. The uh, the scariest thing as a YouTuber is predicting a team to finish like a half a game below where the where <laughs> Vegas projects them because you are the, the worst person on earth if you do that. <laughs> but, but we, yeah, we call few, it like a couple we of see teams it or we in try particular. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. <laughs> Subscribe if you like college football. And we'll see you next time. You've been watching the College Football Bros. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube and in your podcast app for college football content all year round.
For bonus episodes and access to our Discord chat, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash collegefootballbros. Thanks for watching.